Hold well, on. I'm uh, Brian and uh, Brian Loomis, and I'm LNL Cooling, which is uh, that's my HW bot name. Um, I uh, uh, have, over the last three years, developed a, a system that's a, um, a cooling system for CPUs and GPUs. Um, we actually just uh, really finished our GPU uh, system. We've gone through a lot of changes in the last six months. So we have, um, this is our CPU head. Uh, the heads are fully modular. so. Um, you can run as many heads as you want. You can run as many GPUs as you want. Um, it's all uh, process controlled. Yep. So, um, so there's there's no uh, basically no uh, need to monitor your temperatures other than setting it and wow. and and just going going for it. Yeah. So, so our, our our new slogan is "Set it and forget it." <laughs> That's a good one. So to explain so. you guys what's going on here. So the machine he built is basically an overclocking machine that overclocks not for you, but that maintains the temperature to the temperature you set for that's you. Right, yeah. So you have an LN2 tank, that's 22 PSI tanks, so that's not super high pressure, but it's decent enough for that kind of system. There's some um, splitting here on the output of the, of the tank. You can see it's all frozen, it's been running, it's, it's all wet as well. Um, so it splits into two pipes, one for the CPU, one for the GPU, obviously. Um, it goes down into those insulated tubings here, and then you have some kind of. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, it's a little put, wet. <laughs> let's not put more water. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you have here. This connects basically to your uh, CPU pot. You can see actually here the connectors that that goes there. So you just hook it up like that, and it, what it does, it basically injects LN2 into your CPU container in uh, some sort of automatic way. So it's controlled by this uh, this cryogenic valve here. That is a pretty cool thing, actually. Not easy to get by as well. Uh, it's connected, of course, to power, and in there you have also temperature sensors that are already in there, uh, which helps to uh, have the logic system to basically um, control the injection of LN2 into the pump. Of course, um, LN2 expands, right? So you would have pressure build up at some point. So there's some vent here on the top, and basically the the vapors of the nitrogen evaporate through here. So there's no risk of explosion. Now, of course, the problem when you do extreme overclocking is condensation. All this thing is supposed to freeze, but it only freezes if you have water in the air, right? If you have no water, you'd get no condensation and no condensation, no frost. So what he did, it's, he kind of modded this case. Like yeah. we, I think we can call it PC modding. Um, yeah. So the, the goal initially of PC modding is to make an ugly case look nice. I think this one still looks ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Very ugly. Uh, so you can see he actually Close down the hose here to make sure it's kind of as airtight as possible. Um, there's some pipe here to um, what is one? Also injecting some. No, to remove. Oh, the, to remove uh, the yeah. uh, the Allen two yeah, the vapors. What we do is we take the exhaust actually from. Okay, those we ones. We take the exhaust from the uh, from the containers uh, pots or the yeah. containers, and we reroute that exhaust that back to the. Um, Back to the case, oh, okay. and that and that what that does is it purges out all of the uh, uh, ambient atmosphere. Yep. It purges out all of the uh, uh, air, which contains water. Yeah. So you the end moisture. up with a case basically that builds up mm -hmm. just nitrogen. That's right. It's like nitro. It's an. It's a. It's a. Basically, a nitrogen bubble. Yeah. A nitrogen <laughs> tank. Yeah, a nitrogen tank. So basically, that removes all the air that has the humidity, so you have no frost. So. You actually almost don't do any insulation in there. I don't do any insulation yeah. at all. So you mount your pot straight on your CPU. You have the same kind of pot for your GPU. Yeah. You connect them together, close down the case so it's more or less airtight, and that's it. Yeah. That's all that happens. Yeah, there's our GPU pot. And you slot it just like that in there. So yeah, insulation. yeah. No insulation, yeah. yeah. So the thing is, in that tank, temperature goes down to probably around minus 50 or something. Yes. So everything is really cold. So even if you had some water, like... It would be frozen. It would be frozen instantly. Yeah, yeah. So there would not be any risk of actually... Yeah, and, and that's... A very limited one. That's the only issue is that the, sometimes the water builds up on top of the, uh, the, pipes, the hoses, yeah. the pipes. And follows the pipes so, down So it'll there. follow the pipes down. And I left them connected last night. So, yeah. <laughs> so I actually opened it up to dry that. Yeah, so what so. if you bench the case upside down higher than the pipes? Oh, no, it, I don't think... I don't know. That's a good idea, but it would be really hard to get into yeah. and, and take apart and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> 
So of course you can't open the case while you're benching, otherwise the whole thing would lose its purpose, right? Well, you you can, but you but just quick. for a short period yeah. of time. So you don't want to leave it open for. I had it open for about maybe ten minutes doing yeah. different stuff, but. If you if you leave it open to build up a significant amount of ice and that ice actually melts once it's yeah. well like you said once it's frozen it's frozen yeah so so of course he modded the, the case window as well are you so basically uh, this goes that way. Oh, there you go oh, yeah. this way uh, that one see. yep so you can see there's an opening here for all the pipes and basically you try to close this down with some foam and things like that. I suppose there would be a nicer system. Yeah, well, well we, just, we just we just started running the GPU yeah. in this, but what we have uh, right now is a clamshell that goes over the CPU. Okay, so it's just yeah. a matter of cutting a clamshell. Yeah, I just yeah. haven't had time in the last couple of weeks to do that. Right, so that's pretty cool. And that window freezes too as well, so you have to use a heat gun to unfreeze it so you're able to see something <laughs> inside as well. And of course, as soon as you do that, it's water if we were running on the case. Yeah, I do actually have a question. Yeah. Uh, do you plan to have like hot plugs for the uh, for the tubings? Have what? Like uh, Yeah, quick disconnects. Yeah, quick disconnect. yeah, we're working on it. It's just that uh, quick disconnects are extremely rare with liquid nitrogen. Yeah. Not, just, not like we water actually, cooling, right? Yeah, we actually have to uh, buy uh, uh, our own. We have to build them, basically. <laughs> they don't, I guess they don't make them. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, not really the engineer. How many so, people yeah. need that kind of stuff? I know, yeah. Quick Dixon neck for liquid nitrogen. So. <laughs> he needs one. Me, <laughs> me, <laughs> me, <laughs> me, I need one. I'll take that one when he's not looking. Yeah. Oh, can I mention one thing? Sure. sure. One thing about our systems is, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I prior to today, yeah. I'd never seen open benching. I'd never done open benching. I'd never just experienced it. But I, but I worked in cryogenics, so I, so I knew that we could use our machines that we're building to, 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 to free. To, but one part of thermal control is heat. Yeah. Okay, so, so what we have inside uh, that I don't think we mentioned is that there, there are heaters inside. Oh, here. yeah, right. I forgot so, so everybody has uh, uh, propane torches, and they warm up their pots with propane yeah. torches if you hit a cold bug or if you need to do something, you know, you need to change out a yeah. CPU or whatever it is. So with ours, what we do is just uh, just like with a, um, a thermostat in your house. Yep. Uh, if you want it cooler in your house, you set it cooler. If you want it warmer in your house, you set it warmer. So we set it the temperature to, um, uh, let's say I set it uh, to positive, uh, I don't want to say positive, but 30 degrees Celsius. It'll warm up in a few minutes to 30 degrees Celsius, then I can take everything apart. And at the same time, mm -hmm. if you're uh, doing a, uh, a benchmark, and during a benchmark, you need more liquid nitrogen, right? Yep. Because it keeps it cool. So if you're doing a benchmark and you hit the end of the benchmark, all of a sudden you don't, up, yeah. yeah, all of a sudden you don't need that liquid nitrogen yeah. and it's and you're you're gonna cold bug. And Which so is what, why we use torches. That's why you use torches. You jam the torch in there and light it up, and that warms it up. Well, yeah. what happens with our process controller is instead of uh, 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 us needing to respond to that, it automatically responds and begins to add heat, okay. and it's actually doing that at a micro level constantly. It's constantly so, going. Cooling, heating, cooling, heating. Yeah. So if I set it at minus 120, it just stays at minus 120 no matter what. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, it could detect the end of the benchmark by itself, like monitoring, for example, wattage output of the PC as soon as it. Ends, yeah, it yeah, but that's a whole other. That's that would a whole be a, other, yeah, but, but that would be cool. Yeah, the right? logic but between the two would be yeah, great. That, that would be, be awesome. But it, it may be yeah. harder to put it to be like to put it place. I don't know. Yeah, the our 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 system responds extremely fast. One yeah. one thing that we didn't show is the yeah we have to show the, this the, is the, control, the, right? the control module. So this is the control module. Yep. Like I said, this is this is where the other end of the of the pigtail is. Yep. That's a that's two heads. You can do as many heads as I've seen systems where people are. Are, are they have like 16 heads? Well, you could do 16 heads. Yeah, it's yeah, just a matter of having sure. enough logic to do it. And, example, yeah, and yeah, we can do it. So, anyways, so right here we're running two, and uh, I actually have another system in my in my room. I could actually run four. I could I could run three right now. And in fact, I think uh, we're going to run two with Joe a little later if he wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, no. So that's uh that's our that's our control module. Another thing that I uh, do is I don't have my tablet out, but I uh, have a, a full um, uh, uh, a program, and it's right now it's a beta. We're not using, you know, we're not selling it with the, the system. But there's a program that I have that I can watch the trend lines of yeah. the heat and of the cooling. So it's like drawing and graphs. And it draws them. the graphs, yeah, and and also you can set it straight from uh, your tablet. Okay. So and uh, uh, our next step, which is we're already working on it right now, is we're going to be able to use an Android 
uh, yep. phone. So you just plug your phone in. You don't need the face of the um, of the controllers anymore. It's going to be a black box. Yep. You plug your phone into the black box, and then you run your your system from your phone. So you don't need a tablet really or anything yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like actually, it replaces also totally the point of having multimeters and all that stuff. Yeah, you which don't. Which is expensive anyway. Yeah. So while you're at it, why not just right. yeah. something that does more? You than know what? That. I never thought of it that way. But you, 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 th these are expensive. They're not. They're not. They're not cheap. Yeah. But at the same time, if you buy two or three multimeters and a and, True, yeah. and your um, uh, your pots and all of your insulation and yeah. and your you pots are smaller, so they actually probably cost less in material, at least in time. Of, in I'm terms not of copper, sure. Right? Well, there's without the without the vat, just there's the a, copper there's pot. There's a there's a ton of features yeah. inside this. Okay. So so the CNC guys kill us. They're like. We want it has big money. There's a lot of stuff put, going on inside. You need to put there. the electronics to warm exactly. up. Exactly. You've got you got the heaters. You got the thermocouples. The thermocouples like maybe a thirty second of an inch off the bottom. Yeah. yeah. You know. So so it's just uh, uh, it's an expensive part for us to make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for uh, your business will be to sell those to other companies. Yes. Or what kind of other industries could use that? Whatever needs to go cold and stay at a temperature so yeah these these um, uh, this comes from um, the aerospace aerospace RF aerospace testing yep. industry this technology um, uh, so so it's basically a crossover of, uh, uh, of technologies so but but the thing with RF and aerospace is these chips what I what I found out right away is that these chips the like the 5960 gets so hot so fast and then get so cold so fast there's nothing out there like it yeah. those aren't the, the in the RF they're not they're not testing chips that are that are that are that are blazing from from 50 watts to 400 watts and then back down to 50 watts in seconds you know and so and so it's been a it's been quite an R&D project to to go from that technology to this something that the, can react the, yeah. fast, control yeah, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Especially with LN2, it's not that easy to uh, actually inject LN2 and control yeah, it. Yeah. how much it's gonna push no, it that's, down. That's the, that's 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 there's there's a couple of really big uh, um, uh, uh, hurdles that you have to clear, and I've I've heard that people have been trying for a long time to clear them. Yeah. But I yeah I, I'm really fortunate to be plugged in with some really good friends in the in the uh, 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 environmental testing industry. Yeah. So yeah. So that system is very different from uh, the one uh, Kingpin Vince showed at Computex. He had more like of a closed loop system. Uh, this one is more like a we cannot call call it a closed loop, but it's also not completely an open loop. It's some in between. Yeah, well, well, closed loop is a refrigeration, like a yeah. refrigerator. So, we'll re so you never, you, you're, you're just time. constantly yeah. running it. So, so you can't, so it, unless you could recondense, the recondense yeah. liquid nitrogen. But then you need the you compressors could, and. Yeah, I mean, and it's just. At that point, just buy a plant and just <laughs> yeah, make exactly. your own LA2 and just make Exactly, it. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> it might be yeah. cheaper. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, just let us know in the chat and we'll uh, check out after and come back if we have some more questions. Yeah. And you can see our website. This is actually yeah. this is actually just uh, come out, so it's not even on the website. Oh, okay. This yeah. is like the breakout here. So what's the what's the address of it's the website? It's lnlcooling.com. lnlcooling.com. Yeah. So check that out, guys, if you're interested. That's pretty cool. How much liters of LN2 do you use for, for example? Uh, you know, know what? Like we benched. Session. We benched all day yesterday, and I've benched for another couple of hours today. Yeah. CPU and, it looks and GPU like both at the same time, right? CPU and GPU at the same time. So on two days of straight benching, and it's not benching where you're just pouring a little at a time. It's yeah. constantly Constance running at 100 the temperature minus 120. 120. So we've used probably uh, maybe two thirds of that yeah. tank. So that's about so, uh, maybe uh, 90 liters. Yeah, know, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how yeah. much because the the, the the gauges kind of suck on the tanks. But I could probably go another day <laughs> on that's, one tank of LN2. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, something to consider if your LN2 is expensive in your region and you can get hold of those, which is not always the case. Yeah. You might save some money as well this way. Yeah, it might Especially evaporate. If you do a lot of overclocking. It might yeah. evaporate. It might evaporate before you, you actually use it. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Well, those tanks hold better than the wars already. So yeah, that's, yeah. That's already yeah. good. How high in pressure can you go on your tanks? Is there a limitation with the? You know what? If things? somebody wanted one that was a thousand psi, we could build one that's a thousand psi. It's just a matter of valve, and yeah. you know, we we'd need to, to change some some. some 
some tolerances and stuff, but um, these are 22 PSI. Uh, we were running at 50, and so it's, that's another big hurdle. We had to, uh, 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 we were buying the 235 tanks, bleeding them down to 50, and then they pretty much regulate at 50 once you bleed them down, but that's a pain. So now we've gone where there's, you can use the 22 PSI tanks, and it's just a matter of finding the fittings which somebody has here, uh, Funsol has it here. Okay. This, uh, to be able uh, to the, connect your... Well, he's, he's, got a, he's got a tank with a pressure building valve on the tank and uh, it's just a matter of, of, of setting that on top of your normal doer that you have right now. So if your normal doer will, will hold 22 PSI, you could use that if it's rated at 22, yeah, so you'll be able to. That, that's, that's, I've been working on that for a long time. So eventually so, yeah. you're going to sell adapters for the doers. Yeah, for the small <laughs> doers and you just pop it on the doer and you probably, you know, yeah. you know bench for, for for a day on, on I just wonder a regular what, what regulations are in place for that if you can easily do your kind of you got to ask the gas company because you're, you're basically locking building pressure in something that is not supposed to oh you know but those have pressure building valves yeah. on it so so, so yeah, fun so souls, his, is, his is rated at 20 psi yeah. so that's all we need right there yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. psi you're good to go so it's just a matter of of, of um yeah, getting the yeah right just fittings putting the fittings the on them on the tank huh? yeah so why not all right Thanks a lot. All right. Good luck with yeah. that. Thank you.